Alright everyone, it's Immortal Phoenix here. I just wanted to help you guys pick out your new monitor because I just had the, the, the oh my god, I had so much time that I, I put into trying to figure out what monitor I should get because my monitor wasn't working very well. Uh, you know, it, it's B, it's been, I've had it for too long and just looking at how many different uh, monitors were out there, had different price ranges. It's hard to know, you know, what's the best monitor for your buck? Like, what do you, what do you get? And what does it mean to, to have a good monitor? What what does getting a good monitor mean? Uh, by that, I mean, what are the specs that you should be looking for? You know, when you're getting a good computer, you look for a great processor, a great video card, a good amount of RAM. But someone who doesn't really know computers, they might say, well, what's a good amount of RAM? Here's one computer being offered with 3 gigs. Here's one being offered with 6 gigs. Here's one being offered with 16 gigs. Should I just go for the 16? Uh, me, I would say no. Why would you go for the 16? That, that computer is probably going to be really expensive. Sometimes the best thing to do is buy a 3, see if there's any expansion slots, and upgrade it because RAM is dirt cheap. But anyways, that's computers. We're talking about monitors here. First, I want to show you an example of what not to do. So after ha figuring out what monitor I'm going to buy, I want to show you guys what some people say and then what uh, what the real specs and what you should really be looking for. So let's read this. So this guy is saying, you know, uh, who makes the best desktop monitors and basically who you should go with. And the answer is basically if you're looking for quality and durability, go with Samsung. Everybody knows that the best monitor comes from Samsung, blah, 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 blah. Now, this is partially true. I would say the highest end monitors by Samsung are probably the best because they have a new technology that's come out called PLS and all their new phones have these PLS type monitors so that's partially true but the thing is if you go for any old Samsung monitor you're gonna get screwed you are gonna waste your money you're gonna hate yourself probably if, because you might go to your friend's house or someone else's house see this amazing monitor and be like oh my god I could have had that I wasted a hundred plus bucks on this when I could have had that yes you, you basically burn your money what I'm here to do is show you guys what what's the best uh, monitor you can get so I'm actually gonna give you what monitor I got but I'm also gonna show you how um, how you should find a good monitor uh, so anyways just to make my point clear, here's here's a list of monitors that I pulled up, uh, different sizes, and I listed them by price points. As you can see, we got a 153 here, ASUS, and you just go down, down. You got yourself, you know, a 23 inch ASUS by here. Um, so if you're just looking for inches, you got 23 inch here AOC, and you have a 23 inch here ASUS, which is better. You can't just go by the brand names; you have to look at the specs. Uh, you know, you see its response time. I'm gonna go into all that stuff. But just to prove the Samsung point wrong, you can look. Here's a 21 inch for 160 buck Samsung computer. I'm sure if you shop around, maybe you can get this for 130, 140. That's still a bad price. You're not going to get this for 80. You're not going to get this for 70, which is probably what it's worth. Um, why is this bad? You can even see the reviews are here are bad. Um, there's a number of metrics that you should be looking at that would show why this this is a bad one first thing that you should be wary of if it doesn't list what type of monitor it is see it says monitor type LED I'm gonna go into what that what that means exactly um, but first you have to know that all LED monitors are LCD monitors and there are three main types of LCD monitors this doesn't list any of that information so honestly if if, if it did it would probably be showing you because it's proud of what it is so it's probably the best quality of those three types so the first thing we need to look at is what type of LCD monitor is this because all the monitors currently out there are LCD so the fact that it's not even listing that is is already a sign that you should be wary the second thing you should look for a monitor size is important do not get anything 19 or less because all those 19 inch or less monitors are going to be about the same price because you keep a monitor for a long period you want something that's preferably 22 or 23 inches this is already cutting some inches off of you and these inches are significant because they measure from corner to corner and an extra inch from this corner adds area here and area here so it's they're cutting a lot from you as you can see already plus 
um, they don't even mention what type of, of LCD monitor this is. This is probably a TN LCD monitor, and I'll, I'm going to go into what the differences are. <clears throat> and then the company that I'm going to show you, they have bad monitors too. Here's ViewSonic. Although it's highly rated, for this price, they've got better monitors. This is a ViewSonic, uh, when you go to the specifications here. Again, it, it, it doesn't tell you that it, this is a such and such type of LCD monitor because it's it's not that ty it's not that high quality type that I'm going to be telling you about um, so that's again it, it's it's within the right uh, screen range though it is 22 inch screen range um, so that's the first thing we've looked at I want to I want to make this periodic I want to make it like I want to explain this to you in a way that that's easy. So first thing you should look at is it should tell you what type of LCD monitor it is. If it doesn't, you should be wary. Second thing, ignore contrast ratios. Contrast used to be an issue with monitors in the past. It's no longer uh, an issue because the thing is now uh, people who make monitors, what they're doing is they're uh, giving you uh, two sets of numbers and sometimes they're they're misleading you on uh, the numbers they give you. For instance, this is telling you there's a 10 million to 1 dynamic contrast ratio. The dynamic number is completely worthless. Every monitor out there will, can give you a 10 million to 1. Uh, this just means they tested it for 10 million different ways or shades and it did fine. The, what's important is the native ratio and some companies are they, they do uh, sort of weaselly things they don't tell you what the native ratio is so if they don't tell you that this is native ratio that means it's probably dynamic ignore it just to be safe ignore contrast ratios altogether don't even look at them because all the latest monitors they've taken care of contrast ratios they've got good contrast in general um, so I would say ignore this metric altogether ignore contrast ratios um, and by the way, uh, what I'm the advice I'm giving you is based off a ton of articles I've read. I'm going to give you all the links to the articles that I've read. Um, here's one of the articles I read that I thought was very useful by CNET. It was a monitor buying guide. And as you see, immediately the first things they tell you about is the types of LCD monitors. So I think it's time to get into that. We haven't discussed that. Again, we're, we went into first... Here, I'll even bring out a notepad for you. First thing we went into was we discussed here. Let's make the font big too so this isn't tiny for you guys. Font, let's make this 26. So first thing we went over, we discussed the fact that it should discuss the type of LCD monitor. If it does not say that, you should be wary. Second thing, I said ignore contrast ratios. Uh, because in general, you'll be okay. The third thing we'll get into but I really want to go into what, what do I mean by type of LCD monitors there are TNs, VAs and IPSs as you see here the TNs are the lowest price they've got fast response times uh, but they're very bad with color reproduction so the color you see is often not the color that it's supposed to be VA is very good with blacks that's it the prices are medium range and the color shifting is good too but the response time honestly doesn't matter guys but besides the deep blacks like there's nothing else good about VAs that's all they're good for is making blacks color reproduction is average that's why it doesn't say here amazing color reproduction what you're looking for is IPS IPS's have the, the closest and the best color reproduction they've got amazing viewing an angles here's the downside though they're they used to be expensive and I'm gonna get into why now that they're uh, now they're well priced finally as of March of 2012 we got ourselves the newest and latest IPS monitor that is very very good at um, reproducing colors but it's within our price and then you've got Samsung like I said they created these uh, PLS monitors that are are good as well um, but they're highly expensive and they're still expensive so um, basically uh, that what I need uh, alright let's let's list them here so we got we got these monitors listed here you should avoid these which ninety percent on the market are 
TN type monitors. For VA, I would also say avoid because they're nothing special. Nothing special. They're just good with blacks, I'd say. IPS, you probably want to select this one. Because it's not, it, it has gotten to the point as of 2012 that these are affordable. Honestly, if you're watching this video 10 years from now, you'll laugh because these will probably be kicked out of the market. Because IPS will have gotten cheap enough to where, why would you buy this to save money? Because this is the same price as this. The only reason in the past people bought TN type monitors is because uh, they were affordable. But the IPS ones are not affordable. Anyway, so that's... The first thing that this article goes into is the different types of monitors. There's different t uh, panel, they call it panel technology. We should talk about backlighting too. And like I said here, um, here, let's go into that right now. Backlighting. So, when it comes to backlighting, what you need to understand is that LED monitors are not. LED screens. They're they're LCD screens, but they're LED backlit. The old LCD monitors, the ones that are not LED backlit, those have been basically phased out of the market. You don't want to buy one of those because one, they don't last very long. Two, they're not good for the environment because they use CCFLs. Um, and, and three, they're just I mean they're not good at, at producing color. So like why would you why would you want an inferior monitor those have been slowly pushed out of the market so it would actually be harder to find one of those to be honest ViewSonic for instance all of their monitors are LED backlit from top to bottom expensive to cheap they're all LED backlit so you want an LED backlit monitor that's what you want so don't don't just have someone say LED monitor that's not good enough. That's just the backlighting. That doesn't tell you anything about the screen. The screens are always LCD. Screen always LCD. And that's what this paragraph tells you about. Uh, they come and explain it to you. And then there's different types of LED backlights. To be honest, I wouldn't worry about this because this information usually is not published, and you'll be you'll be doing all right. Regardless, you'll be you'll be getting a good LED backlit monitor. Second, I already went over with you. You've got the low quality TA and the medium quality VAs and the high quality IPS. The PLS are too expensive for you to buy, and honestly, they're probably not worth the money. The difference in quality between IPS and PLS is negligible, and unless you're working in a movie studio, it won't matter. So I would say go with IPS, not with PLS. Three, when we get here, let's see what else we should talk about. I told you ignore contrast ratio. Brightness uh, is important, but if you have an IPS type monitor it will have already gotten the benefits of brightness basically getting an IPS type monitor all the other benefits of having that kick in you get good brightness you get good black level you get a lot of the benefits right off the bat and then this whole paragraph is telling you how the industry is changing contrast ratios and doing the weasel stuff so again bottom line take all measured specs with a grain of salt however take dynamic crafts contrast specs with a huge back load, bucket load of salt basically ignore dynamic numbers and uh, the native numbers are good enough now that you don't have to worry about them. the next thing I want to talk about because there might be some gamers here that are discussing this for is response time alright so what gamers say is you should get a two millisecond or less response time that's BS unless you make your your money meaning your profession is like being a gamer I would not recommend doing that because some some of the best monitors right now do not have two millisecond or less response times because they're trying to show you such good color and such good quality they they take a little bit longer as far as response time goes but why do you why should you care why remember a millisecond is a thousandth of a second and two thousandths of a second they're showing you a new image your eye can only see it if you have a very good eye at 12 milliseconds um, uh, per image response time so your eye can't even see two milliseconds actually your eye has seen there's six images that have been shown to your eye it only sees one of those six images um, every 12 milliseconds so I mean 
all the gamers, you guys can be, there can be an uproar about this, but I'm telling you, the two millisecond response time, you can get those monitors, but they're cheap quality. They're not going to give you the best color, and unless you you're, you're a profession is gaming and you want the the edge, like the biggest edge in the world, if that's your profession and you want whatever edge is possible, then sure, maybe in that case you might want to go because maybe on the off chance you've lowered your response time to 11 milliseconds, and maybe this will give you uh, that one image, that one time, you know, that that saves you and you win the championship with it, whatever. Uh, that's it's it's even funny to think about. I know it's it's absurd, but when it when it comes to a computer monitor, 12 millisecond or or around that is okay. Honestly, if you got a 20 millisecond monitor, you'd still be okay. Where things get become an issue is about 50 or 60. Thankfully, they don't make 50 or 60 millisecond response time monitors. So response time, I'm gonna say ignore, because the monitors are all good enough that any monitor you get will have a good response time and like I said your eye only processes 12 milliseconds per image response time so response time is only up because uh, computer manufacturers thought that it sound nice and it seem it make their monitors sound so cool but it's not really all that important anyways so having said all of this as you remember from this monitor buying guide and there's another guide here that you want to look at. This is telling you about aspect ratios. This is a somewhat older post. As you can see here, this is from 2010. Right now, all the monitors are widescreen, which is 16 by 9. And the reason they're widescreen is because widescreen movies 1080p, that's all defined by the widescreen size format. So if you want to see a wide uh, if you want to see an HD movie, it's widescreen by definition. So there's no reason to have 4x3 monitors anymore. I'm personally accustomed to 4x3 monitors, but all the new monitors out there are widescreen. So 5 I'm going to put is you will be getting a widescreen, most likely. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. Actually, wrong with that. Actually it's it's a bit of a benefit because widescreen monitors allow you more space to move move uh, windows and such whereas you've got less space as on these 4 by 3 monitors that I'm working on so don't worry about the whole widescreen thing don't even try to look for a 4 by 3 that's tw more than 20 inches you won't see it because again by definition an HD monitor has to be a certain size and all those sizes are defined by widescreen so that's why everyone's moved to that. If you remember YouTube, YouTube videos used to be 4x3, but now they're, uh, they're widescreen format. If you play a 1080p uh, YouTube video, it's widescreen by definition. And uh, for those video editors out there, we all know what that means. Graphic designers, we get that. But for everyone else, just understand that if you want high definition, it has to be in widescreen. If you want to know why, uh, it's just like that by definition. Um, it's hard to explain unless you're in the industry, but you're gonna be guess you're gonna be getting a widescreen monitor. I'm just letting you know that now, as of 2012. In 2010, it was there's a bit more difference, but that's not the issue anymore. Man, I should have gotten some water ready. So we went through contrast ratio, we went through aspect ratio, brightness. Like I said, if you get a good type of monitor, that's already included. Response time, I told you it's BS. Um, viewing angle, if you get a good type of monitor, it will automatically give you a good viewing angle. So again, you're seeing here that monitor type is huge. If you get a bad monitor type, everything else messes up. Um, dot pitch, again, will, will be the same thing. What you want to look at now is, this is a very, very in-depth article from PCHardwareHealth.com about what the difference is between the IPS, the VA, and the TN. And... I would re suggest this article to be read by anyone that wants to go in detail. But, like I said, since IPS panels have gotten cheaper finally as of 2012, there is no need to buy VA or TN. Because if you pay 140 or 130 on a TN, you can just pay 180 and you'd have an IPS. So, save your money, don't buy a VA type, don't buy a TN type, buy yourself an IPS type. Even when I was uh, checking monitors on here, 
uh, if I go back here for a second, they had a banner, Best Buy, saying, oh, these are the IPS monitors. You should check them out. Let me check it. Yeah, right here. I was shop. I was looking through to show you guys examples of what to put up here, and even um, Best Buy was showing off like, "Hey, if you want IPS, you know, top of the quality monitors, shop those IPS monitors." And if you click that, um, oh yeah, this is what I want to show you. I already did this right here. So I wanted to show you that IPS monitors in general are expensive, but like I said, as of this year, there are some that come out came out that are that are uh, cheaper. So look, this Asus, oh, 500 bucks. This Dell, 400 bucks. This this HP, 400 bucks. This HP, 700 bucks. This HP, 300 bucks. And by the way, you buy any of these, they're they're good quality. All of these, you could buy them in a heartbeat. No worries, no nothing. And look, as you see, the response times are a little bit different because it takes a little bit longer for them to show you the picture. Six milliseconds, eight milliseconds. But remember, I told you why that's, that's not important. I told you why a six millisecond response time is honestly the same as a two millisecond response time. Uh, because to our eyes, anyways. And like I'm showing, you see how expensive these are. Look, this is where it starts to get more appealing. 230 for this LG. That's still a lot of money. So you know what, guys? I am going to get you a monitor in the 100 era, and as you see, it, it just hit itself right here. It's called the ViewSonic 23-inch VX2336S. It's 180, and you might be shocked and be like, "Oh my God!" You know, like it's so cheap compared to all these other ones—600 bucks, right? This is probably really sucky quality, but honestly its quality is the exact same as this which is the top end three hundred dollar ViewSonic uh, high quality monitor so you're getting a, a three hundred dollar monitor for 180 and I think this is what you should pick from all the research I did for your monitor because this is currently one of the cheapest IPS monitors I think uh, there's a few other companies that have a few cheaper ones but this is the best bang for your buck because they have a few bleed issues from the backlight this backlight does not bleed ViewSonic went over it thoroughly and there's a few graphic designers I read their reviews and they said that they bought they only would buy this because they needed it for their profession this this ViewSonic VP2365 but now they tested this one out and they found that this one is the exact same as that one. And uh, there's a few people who used, uh, they they went onto YouTube, they're called uh, overclockers.ru. They proved that the quality of this is uh, mathematically the same as that. They're basically the, the same monitor. The only difference is this stand is better. And there's a few other features that this has that this one doesn't. So, again, I would recommend you go and buy this monitor, the VX2336. It's right here. I would recommend you buy it on Amazon because if you buy it on Amazon, you avoid tax and you avoid a recycling fee. California has a recycling fee, as do a couple of other states. If you buy it on eBay, you have to pay the tax. You have to pay tax. If you buy it on Best Buy, you have to pay the recycling fee and the tax. The best place to buy this monitor is on um, on Amazon right now. You will get and this. Here's are some pictures of this monitor. It's very beautiful. It's IPS. It's an IPS monitor, which is why it tells you right there in the title, I am IPS. And again, that's a good sign because they're kind of showing off, hey, this is a this is an LCD monitor that is far and above the other ones. And like I said, here, if you've got the money, you can pay 300 bucks, but you'll get the same exact quality as this. Now, you might say, well, how do, how do you know that? Well, that's not what I've been saying. That's what reviewers have been saying. So, for instance, if you look at this reviewer, he looked at this monitor and he said, hey, this monitor is the same as the VP version. Oh, not that reviewer. I think it was, was it this reviewer? It was one of these reviewers. I've got a bunch of reviews, by the way. I think it was this one, yeah. So it's saying that this, the floodgates have opened for cheap VP, uh, VP, IPS type, and it's the VP one is one of the uh, $300 ones, right? IPS ones. 
But this is even cheaper than that. This is even more affordable than the VP one. So you can just go to their verdict for now. Despite some minor flaws, the ViewSonic blah 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 is easy, easily the best sub 200 screen we've seen. IPS image quality has hit the mainstream. That's why we should be buying IPS type uh, monitors. Here's another uh, review you guys can go through. I'm going to put these in the in the description. And here's another one that goes through explaining why this is uh, amazing. And here's uh, another site that has a list of reviews. And they give it an overall 98 out of 100, this monitor. because, And the reason why they're giving it such high reviews is because it gives you great quality. It gives you, you know, top of the line quality. It gives you uh, an unbeatable price. And it gives you, you know, this amazing 23 inch monitor. So it's, the size is great too. It gives you the best of, you know, all worlds. And like I said, the price is only 180 compared to the two, three, four hundred dollar monitors. So why would you spend a hundred bucks when you can spend a little bit more and get the top of the line monitor that you're going to be using for years and years and years? So what's the upshot? What's the conclusion? What should you what should you know? The upshot is this. I'm going to write it down too. I'm going to type it out down for you guys. I'm going to type it here. You should ignore most specs if you buy a good LCD type monitor which by definition will have great specs so aim for a great type IPS not VA or TN honestly that'll make your life a lot better go for a good IPS type look at the reviews like I did and see what the reviewers have to say. And from all the reviewers I looked at, they said that the ViewSonic VX, uh, whatever the numbers are here, v VX 2336S, that's the best bag for your buck. And they said that the quality is just amazing. The quality is equivalent to this. So you, you wouldn't even need to buy uh, this if you just go ahead and pick up this 23 inch. So again we'll go through we'll go through it all again get the right type of LCD monitor make sure it's LED backlit ignore contrast ratios because they've been fiddling with them they've been giving you dynamic numbers instead of native or static numbers ignore response time because it's BS um, and you you're definitely gonna be getting a widescreen so for everyone that's used to those 4 by 3 square types I'm sorry you're gonna have to switch just by the the definition of what HD and widescreen is. I hope this helps guys. Um, I hope that this gives you some idea of what type of monitor you should buy and like I said if you go on to Amazon right now this is the best place where you can buy it. Um, this is the monitor you probably want to be getting. This is Sonic here. And I'm going to be putting the links to all of these different guides, these different um, reviews up and down or not up down in the description I hope this helps guys uh, take care of this immortal Phoenix I know this was daunting but this is how much work you have to go into when figuring out what type of stuff you should buy um, and when anything in TVs monitors computers you gotta do your research and explaining all that research sometimes takes a while but I think watching this video is much better than you spending the next couple hours researching it on your own. So I hope this helped. I hope it saved you hours and hours of time. Get yourself an IPS monitor. Make sure that it's it's large, so a 23 inch or better. And like I said, I would highly suggest this particular one if you just want to know what the best monitor is to get right now. Take care guys. Um, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial vid. Bye.